Is your desk looking like a giant jungle of cables? Well, fear no more, because it ends today. We are going to build the slickest, the coolest, the most incredible Dex PC you will have ever seen. It will have a full computer, a printer, a scanner, and much more. And all of that will fit inside the thickness of the table. Let's get started. Hey, I'm Pierre from France. A year ago, I posted the video of the first version of my desk PC. That video got tons of views and a lot of you guys have shown their interest into that build, so I decided to bring this concept on Kickstarter. But before doing so, I had to bring this concept one step further towards total awesomeness. To get there, first we'll need to improve the design, especially the thermals, and secondly, we we'll also have to make it easier to build because currently it's just too difficult. So if we want to make 200 of them, it will have to be much easier. So yes, making it better and making it easier to build. That's basically the plan. This is the first version of the desk. Let's see what needs to be improved. The first thing that we want to change is the cooling of the PC, because currently the airflow comes from four horizontal fans here, and you see it's very cluttered with the, the cables and there's a lot of things, so the air is actually not moving correctly. Besides, I missed something essential, which is the fact that the bottom of the desk is actually made of metal. So actually the whole desk could be acting like a giant heatsink. So the plan is to have the GPU and the CPU both linked directly to the bottom's aluminum sheet. And this way it will be cooling the system very efficiently. Something else is the power supply of the computer. It will have to be just next to the motherboard. This way we'll get rid of all those cables. Last, we want to change the top sheet of the desk because currently we are using steel with wood veneer on top. Uh, it's not ideal for two reasons. First, it was very difficult to make. And besides, it's not very durable because the wood veneer kinds of chips away on some places. So instead I made a second desk with plywood and it feels very good it's much lighter also and i think it's much better so we are going to use plywood instead to make this kind of complex project you need to make very precise plans such that everything will fit in correctly for that the best is parametric 3d modeling softwares i used a free and open source one which is called freecad and it's really awesome so if you're interested you can check that out I leave the link in the description. So this is the model of my first desk and we know what's to be done, so let's get to work. Oh! Nice, it's already done, look at that. So the general idea is that you have a set of covers which define different cavities and inside of them you have, well, there will be different components. So here there will be a scanner, a printer, here it's for a screen, a pen display screen, you have several power sockets, uh, you have cable holes that let you route cables outside and the most important part is obviously the, the, the computer itself. Here on the 3D model you have uh, the motherboard and the GPU and uh, the way they are set is that they are both upside down and in fact their main chips are in contact with those aluminium uh, bridges and the plan is that the heat is transferred to uh, through the aluminium to the bottom uh, sheet which is also made of aluminium so the idea is that the whole bottom of the desk will uh, radiate the heat uh, off. Uh, on top of that you can see that there is uh, some holes for a fan here. So the idea is that you will have a small fan which is blowing directly uh, on the bridge which will uh, directly cool the, the chips. 
Besides, uh, there is another heatsink which is hidden inside this uh, this part here, um, and you see it's quite a huge uh, heatsink, and you have an array of twelve fans which will be blowing air directly on it. So the general idea is that you have the heat which is generated here and here by the CPU and GPU and then it will be uh, transferred to the big heatsink through the aluminum sheet. So there should be plenty of uh, uh, cooling uh, capability here and I think it will be most efficient. For the first desk I made the whole prototype myself. However, now the plan is to bring it to Kickstarter, so just making a prototype is not enough. We must be sure that we have a factory that can build maybe two or five hundred of those desks. So after a lot of search and discussions, I found several suppliers that could do the job. So I selected one and I asked him to make the prototype for us and to check if the quality is correct and so on. So we'll follow the process of him making the structure of the prototype and then I'll finish it myself. First stop at the CNC laser cutting machine where a 7mm plywood panel is being cut into our desk top layer. The components of the frame have a lot of uh, holes and complex shapes, so in order to make them very precisely and get a nice result, we're using a milling machine which is cutting exactly where we want. To assemble the components of the frame and glue everything together, we are using a panel of MDF in which we carved the shape of our desk. This way we can clip all the, the components of the frame at the exact position and we are sure that all the angles are square. Now that the wood assembly is done, we spray a varnish to protect the wood and get a nice finish. And back to laser cutting, uh, you can see the bottom aluminum sheet of our desk, which is being cut to our precise drawings. For our big heat sink, we are using the skiving process, which is basically taking a big block of aluminum and you have a heavy blade which comes and cuts small slices and straighten them up. Well, that box sure didn't fit into my mailbox, I can tell you that. So the supplier finally sent me the prototype, they were tasked to build the wood assembly as well as the aluminum sheet and the aluminum heat sinks. So you can see there are all those uh, components in there and the quality overall feels uh, really nice. Uh, they did a pretty good job. There are a few issues that I already discussed with them and it shouldn't be a problem later on. Just a few inaccuracy like uh, these screws which were not flush on the surface but that can be solved pretty easily. Well that shape is clearly not correct. I think they used a 45 degree bit to make the chamfer angle here instead of 60 degree. So we'll just fix that on the prototype and move on. I really can't stand the concept of planned obsolescence, so the back panel of the desk is assembled to the wooden frame with uh, wood inserts and metric screws. This way it's very easy to disassemble if you have something to fix, if you want to customize it and so on. It gives you full access to the internals. Let's now uh, install the electrical system of the desk, starting by uh, popping the power sockets in their holes. The general idea is that you have one main power input which then connects to several power sockets and a few power cords. It's actually a kind of embedded power strip basically. The power cords are for the computer, screen and printer power supplies and there are a total of uh, 9 power sockets, 5 inside the desk and 4 under the desk. This way you can connect pretty much whatever you want, wherever you want, it's very convenient. And we finish by insulating all of that with hot glue. And we also ground the aluminum sheet. For our massive uh, heatsink, we need a large array of uh, 12 fans all connected in parallel. So we are going to start by gluing all the fans together. Though it's quite a big mess of cable right now. Ah, that's much better now. All nice and tidy. The array of fan can now be installed just in front of the heatsink. 
And that concludes the internal of the desk, so we can put it all back together. For the leg of the desk, we are going quite over the top as we are actually using standing desk uh, legs. So the, this is off the shelf component, so there isn't much to say, it's just assembly. There is one thing though, it's that the side plates are customized such that the position of the holes are actually precisely the same as our desk. So it's very easy to assemble them and it looks very nice. For the control buttons of the standing desk, uh, the initial idea was to make a custom PCB similar to the one that we'll be making for the rest of the desk, but I think we can actually do better uh, while keeping the original buttons. And let's be honest, I, I probably just like uh, hitting my 2000 euro prototype with a hammer and a chisel as, as I did with the previous one, so let's just go along with that. As you can see, it looks pretty neat like that, so I'm pretty happy with the result. So this is the aluminum bridge, and as you can see, it looks very good. It has been made with uh, CNC uh, milling for the prototype, but in production, it will be made with aluminum extrusion. And the PWM fan fits perfectly in there. There are a few burrs uh, along those uh, holes, so I will be cleaning them and sanding them down until it's very flat, because if it's not, then the transfer of heat will be pretty bad. We apply some thermal paste on the feet of the bridge, and then we can finally screw it in place, which will enable to make a great contact between both surfaces. So from the desk, we also need a lot of custom cables to connect the peripherals to the motherboard, and, but that gives pretty bad uh, time lapses. So we'll just go like that and you see the USB, then you cut it off, then you strip it. You take the wires, strip them and apply some inserts with the pliers, and then you just put on the plastic cap and they are ready to, to connect to the motherboard. So um, yeah, 3D design was not enough though. I, I also had to do a, a PCB design. Uh, you see the speakers actually need an amplification PCB and I couldn't find any which uh, fits neatly in my enclosure. Also the, the buttons of the LCD needed to be accessible. Uh, so I ended up making a custom PCB for those, uh, those two functions. For that, I used uh, KiCad, which is uh, a free and open source PCB design software. So it mostly goes like this. First, you source the components like the switches, potentiometer, amplification chips, and so on. Then you follow the data sheets, which explains you how to connect the different components together, which basically forms the schematic of your PCB. And then you can start working on the physical board, which will be the PCB that you will hold in your hands. Once that's done, you can order PCB samples from many suppliers on the internet. It's actually fairly easy and it's quite inexpensive. Once you receive the, the PCB, you can then uh, assemble uh, your components on it. So basically you, you just insert the components if there are through holes and you solder them or you also have some components which solders on the surface. So now the, the PCB is quite complete and it's working pretty well. For the sound system, we are using woofers and tweeters. This way we have two-way speakers, which will give us an incredible sound. Foam is used to prevent any vibration in the metal panel. To connect the speakers, we are going to need some more uh, custom cables, which are here and we are going to connect them to the speakers and as you can see on each side where we have two speakers one tweeter and one woofers to, so to connect them we are going to need a crosswalk and this part just let us split the frequencies the sound frequencies to the tweeter and the, and the woofer so the high pitch noises go to the tweeter and the low pitch like the basses and all they go to the woofer it is now time to add the, the core of our desk PC, the computer. 
Starting with the GPU, we have to remove the stock cooler. So we'll remove all the screws, remove the fans and the heatsink. Then we clean the thermal paste and replace it. A flexible riser cable is used to connect the GPU to the motherboard. And then we don't forget to connect the bridge fan before putting the GPU in place and screwing it down. It's looking good. Now for the motherboard, we'll connect the RAM stick, the power supply and the peripherals such as the power button, the audio for the speaker and the USB lines for the screen and for the printer and the scanner. Then we apply some thermal paste and we're ready to go. The power supply we are using is the Enhance 7660, which is the go-to for all small factor builds. It's super compact and super powerful. It has a connector output, which lets us connect things very easily. And now it's time for a little bit of cable management, wiring it all together. The screen is a 22 inch pen display from Huion. We're lucky because I told them about my project and they agreed to make a custom glass to the desk dimension. So it's just very easy to integrate it. We'll just add the DVD drive. Make sure nothing is in the way and then we can close it up. And last, we connect the scanner. And with that, my ultimate desk PC is finally complete. I often have to make some sketches, sign documents, take notes and so on, and that has often been a limitation for me. So I included a 22 pen display right there, and I think it's also very nice to have a secondary monitor. And for the eventual thing that I really must print, like shipping labels or whatever tickets, I added a small thermal printer. Even today you still have those institutions that like to send papers, so for those I added a flatbed scanner, this way I can scan those documents and get rid of the papers. In this enclosure, you have several power sockets, which are great because they let you connect any additional hardware, such as your screen power supply, your chargers, a lamp or whatever you want. Also with those channels for the cables, it's very easy to route the cables outside. And this one is very nice because you have a DVD drive here and it also gives you access to the motherboard IO shield, so you can connect external drives or such and it lets you store a lot of different things. You could even put your internet router in there if you want. And for gaming, movies and such, we have our custom dual way speakers right there. And when you have a desk like that, you probably spend a lot of time at it. So standing desk is a great way not to sit all day long. I don't know what you think, but I'm extremely pleased with the result. It's very clean, there's no cable, it feels good because it's real wood and so on. And also the thickness is not very high, you see it's only maybe 5 centimeters or so. So it actually feels like a normal table, it's not like the huge desk PC where you have like 30 centimeters and you don't know where to put your legs. And if you think it's nice just like seeing it like that, it's actually nothing compared to actually sitting and using it. It feels really awesome because you have the screen here like, and here and you feel like you're at the commander's desk of like a freaking spaceship or something. Do you like it? Well, you can always make one yourself if you have the motivation and time to spare. Otherwise, as a lot of you guys have shown their interest into that build, I decided to bring it to Kickstarter. I know that pre-ordering on Kickstarter might feel a little bit scary because of all the horror stories that we hear where some guys just run away with the money because they just had like a fake project. However, I like to mention that it's not my first project. I already made four or five before and for all of them I delivered all the products and all the faulty units were replaced and so on. 
So for example, that's the RetroStone 2, which is like a retro gaming console that I launched uh, on Kickstarter about two years ago now already. And it's working great. Uh, all the units that were bad were replaced and so on. So, um, and it's actually available right now. So I'm I kind of sponsoring my own video, but if you enjoy this kind of retro gaming console, you can you can check it out on uh, 8bcraft.com. I leave the link down into the description. Another thing to mention is that if you think it's cool, but you are mostly using a laptop, so you don't really see the point, well, don't live so fast because I'm myself actually using mostly a laptop these days. So I'm planning to make an external GPU uh, docking station so that the plan will be that you just connect the USB-C cable to your laptop and then bam, it will connect all the peripherals at once and your computer will get much more powerful for gaming and such because of the external GPU. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed it, please consider liking the video and subscribing, which is like totally free, of course. And if you enjoyed it even more, please consider backing me on Kickstarter. It will launch probably in June or something like that. I will let you check down below in the description uh, for the exact uh, date. And if it hasn't started yet, then I suggest that you leave your email address on uh, my website, which is also linked down below in the description. And this way you will be the first to be notified when it launches, and you will be able to access the early bird offers. So thanks again and uh, have a good day. Bye bye.